<laughs> Camera. <laughs> scoot back in, scoot back in. Happy Halloween, Happy everybody. Woohoo. Yes, so before we get into it, uh, let's talk about our costumes super quickly. But first of all, welcome to Adobe Live. This is Alec. Hi. <laughs> Alec's an awesome illustrator. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, and we're going to jump into Adobe Fresco in a moment, which is an iPad illustration and drawing app. But costumes, so what is this? It's my hollow body. It's my hollow body. It's my heart. It's it's not it's non existent. Yeah, somebody just took that marquee tool and deleted your heart right out of it. Oh, it hurts. Where is it? Ouch. <laughs> oh, ow. It's your own art inside of you. Look at that. <laughs> it's a fish. Whoa, and, and a, a planet. Scuba diver. Who is is that a little you? Everyone has a little scuba diver inside of them. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I hope you make it through the stream I with that it. mortal wound. I know. Okay, chat, what do you think? I am. I'm gonna give you a minute to guess. I've got Creative Cloud. Let me get on my serious face. Hmm. I've got my stack of books. I've got my brushes, character styles, Adobe Live assets. What could it be? I'll give you a hint. It's not easy managing all of these libraries. Wink, wink. Uh, <laughs> Kathleen was getting creative with these costumes, yes. Yes, I was. Anybody? No? Creative Cloud Libraries? Creative Cloud Librarian? Get it, get it. It's me, yay, Alberto <laughs> got it, yes. Amazing, Rasim Linda is also an amazing guest. Oh no, my CC, it's CC falling. Librarian. Yes, that is me. Somebody's gotta manage all of these darn assets because you're not doing it. Somebody's gotta do it. <laughs> <laughs> ding, 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 ding. Yay, congrats. All right, I wanted to do something that Adobe people would appreciate. Approved. <laughs> okay, so actually into the serious business. Alec, you are here yesterday working on an illustration yeah. in Fresco, so we're gonna jump back into that. But chat first, I wanna let you know that we have a whole day of Adobe Live coming up. We have the um, XD Daily Creative Challenge following us mm. at 11 8, or 11.30 with Peter Del Tondo. So he's gonna be teaching you a specific workflow in XD, which is our kind of UI UX screen design web design app. Very cool. And then if you want some more XD goodness, stick around at noon with Mandy. She's gonna bring it back with some more XD. Very cool. <laughs> Adobe, Adobe Creative Cloud Librarian goals, that's me. I'm the goals because I think I'm the only one. That yeah. makes sense. Okay, and then in about 30 minutes, we're gonna be doing a chat and win. So make sure you're logged in on Behance and ready to chat. And then at 11, we are both gonna be critiquing your challenges for today that Jesus just went over. So the challenge uh, for Photoshop is to kind of ghoulify a portrait. If you wanna learn more about that, you can click the challenge tab over here. Get that submitted by 11 on Discord and we will do some critiquing. Okay, cool. So Alec, maybe you should introduce yourself in case people weren't watching yesterday. Hi, my name is Alec Liu. Um, I'm an illustrator based in San Francisco. I do mostly editorial illustration, but literally just anything. You know, anything. I love create art, I create illustration for people, you know, for clients, for friends, for family. Oh, yeah. For the whole world. So, so editorial illustration, I'm mainly focused on more, more of what I really think of I should be voice about. And we, I think we all audience could collect, improve collectively. Mm -hmm. So I, I like to create this like, really interesting characters and doing things that brings awareness, what's happening around us. So yeah. be mindful about what you're creating. I think um, as artists, this is a really strong instrument for us mm -hmm. to express ourselves, like what we care for, what we care about. Yeah, and yeah. say something about it. Yeah. Yeah, Adobe Live says such lovely illustrations. Oh, thank you. Yes, the shapes are great. The colors are perfect, I would say. Thank you. And then we're gonna jump back into the one you're working on for today, yeah. which is also editorial because it has some sort of meaning behind it. Right. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? So, okay. So this sketch, um, we're talking about uh, environmental issues and like waste reduction. So these people, this character I create standing on a little green sprout and using their reusable um, bags, tote bags, water bottles, and utensils. I think it's really cool to see people bring their own cup to coffee shop. Mm -hmm. Very great, I love them. And use their own boba straw uh -huh. for all the boba lover. Yes. So yeah, I'm just creating all these characters and having the Kung Fu gesture to fight for environment issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Very so, cool. Yeah. Man, I was recently at Boba Guys and they had the compostable straws. Yeah. It was awesome. I love that. It's made with corn, right? Some, yes. It feels like plastic, but mm -hmm. it's made with corn. Mm -hmm. It's awesome. That's and great. there are softer ones, like more cardboardy, that get a little bit soggy, but I'll take the sogginess if it if means If you can anything. body your glass one, it oh, looks yeah. really cute. Yeah. yeah. It's very true to see all the boba going through. Right. Leah says, yes, boba. Let's talk about boba for the next two hours. Uh, that would work for me. <laughs> it's, it's best invention. Cool. So you said yesterday that you started on paper for the sketch. Yeah, so my process is I, I all, always start with pencil and paper and eraser, oh. really three simple mediums because I think I really like that analog and traditional feel when I actually draw it. Yeah. I can really connect to what I'm designing. Um, after that, I'll just scan it on Photoshop or Fresco right now. I'm just like repaint it and just, or paint it and do a little adjustment because yeah. it's quicker than erasing and redo the pose. Oh, and so you do, like do another pass of line work. Yeah, so oh, okay. sometimes the arm could be too short, sometimes the head yeah. could be too big, or mm -hmm. the gesture doesn't really feel balanced. And use transform tool to tweak it a little ah. and, and just like retrace that line for, for improvement. Mm -hmm. Then I'll start doing this color study to see how the finish will actually kind of look. You know, very rough. Mm -hmm. And just play with colors and do some um, color study, pick your limited palette, for this one, I wanted to be really green for environment, so mm -hmm. I, I have the really strong. <laughs> oh, oh heart your is heart is up. back. <laughs> no. So the, the backdrop, I want to use green, and I want to do a warm color and a character to draw the attention of the audience. Mm -hmm. So I do the orange hair, you know, like more like um, warmer tone of skin tones yeah. for characters and dramatic gestures. So I create this like little triangles here oh. for people to actually, you know, use their sign and go around. You're What's so happening? right, yeah, because the straw kind of creates this nice diagonal. The guy's pose on the right is a beautiful diagonal. Yeah, so uh, you know, this like triangle shape always draw audience attention to the image better. Illuminati yes. confirmed. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> it works. It works. No, my book is falling apart. Yeah, so <laughs> this is basically how I started for my final painting, before mm -hmm. my final painting. And yeah. So we're just gonna keep going. Okay, cool. And all of your shapes are on different layers. Yes, so because I think it's easier because you can you can always adjust mm. the contrast. You think this contrast is too light. Right. Against the background, it's too dark. Then you just select a layer and adjust the hue, adjust the transparency or brightness right. to make it more uh, popped out or more balanced. Right, so you're kind of saving yourself trouble later by separating all of these shapes. Right. And nice. how, I, how I work is literally just paint block to block. You know, you just, for example, I'm gonna do the hair here. Use your one finger to do the eye drop tool. Oh, nice. Love this, love this function. Select the black in my color study. New layers here, right here. And select a tool brush. On my favorite is save it for a natural anchor. Mm -hmm. Always save your brushes, it's really it's a time saver. Yeah, it's so easy to just tap that little star. Now it's a favorite. Right, and what I will do is you use a brush to just sort of contouring the shape here, right here, and use a bucket tool to fill it. Nice. And you will see there's a little, because of texture of the brush, there's mm -hmm. some pixel missing. Just go back and refill it. Very good. And the hair is uh, below the face yeah. layer so that you didn't really have to worry about doing that line. Yeah, so I don't have to worry about the edges touching between the hairs mm -hmm. and face. They really so. are overlapping a little bit. Right. So so you save you a lot a lot of time just to do like a really simple shape as it actually behind a skin tone mm -hmm. shape. So. Nice. Yeah, so kind of just plan ahead um, what your layers are. It will save you a lot of time to erase and repaint. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I just keep create layers behind the shape I create before. Oh, okay. Got you. Yeah, so. That's really interesting. Yeah, the color study, it's just very important in my process because it just saves so much time on final painting mm -hmm. because at first I started doing illustration. A lot of them, I just jump into final illustration right away, but mm -hmm. I struggle with the color and contrast so much. And turns out I spend three to two hours plus mm -hmm. than before the planning. So preliminary work is a very big part of my yeah. process. Right, it's fun sometimes to just like go in and willy nilly choose colors, but right. you don't usually get it right <laughs> the yeah. first time. I mean, if you're doing client work, especially if you have luckily got a book deal, mm -hmm. you have a lot of a big amount of work. It's yeah. always plan out before you jump into the 30 final 
painting of illustration. That will be very intense. Yeah, and we talked about this yesterday, but yeah. when you're actually painting, you should really just be executing. Just You already have your idea and you're using your technical skills to paint. Exactly. Not make any creative decisions. Yeah. Uh, Phil says hello from sunny Cornwall. Hello, hello Phil. Phil. Yes, everybody let us know where you're watching from. Anybody in Halloween Town? Anybody in Salem, Massachusetts? <sighs> so spooky. Ooh, we should fix this, first of all, but put my heart back. Um, we should use this time to hear spooky stories from all of your hometowns. Does anybody have like a, a spooky story that your town is known for or like an urban legend? I'm so interested. Are there ghost stories from Taiwan like that people? Oh, there's so many. Yeah, there's like so urban many. legends and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> cool. So what we do is um, there's one when we were a kid with my brother is we don't dial, I think it's zero, 12 times. Hmm. We always say you, that's the number to, to call for hell. Oh no! And people say, oh, actually, people pick up, you know? So <laughs> it's me and my the brother devil. <laughs> and my cousin would literally just like type in 12 zeros in the dial tone. Mm -hmm. And he's like, dad! After dialing, <laughs> just scream out and just throw the phone away. Oh no! That reminds me of doing like Bloody Mary in the bathroom mirror. Have you heard of that one? Yeah. I can't. Ooh, I've never done it. No. I'm too scared. I'm scared to just see myself in the mirror after doing that. Like, I think I would just scare myself. I'm just scared like not seeing myself in the dark. Yeah. That's creepy. No, thank you. Eek. Okay, Val says, I have one. The true commander of Halloween has a scary Let story. Let us know. All right, we'll wait. Oh, Sacramento is a wonderful city, but every day at 5 p.m., it is gridlock traffic jams. <laughs> <laughs> but Val. Horrifying. You Love you. <laughs> I feel you. The San Franciscans definitely understand. Yeah. Uh, Justin says Chicago is where he's watching from, where it is currently snowing, so apparently it's Christmas already. No. Yeah. Very nice. You're in Christmas Town, but Jack Skellington is going to visit you soon. Uh, Robert says I get scared every time a program crashes, and I did not do a recent save. Oh. Uh, scary. My God, that is scary. You know. I think Photoshop has crashed on me maybe three times in my entire life, which is amazing. I don't know if like being <laughs> in this building makes you extra lucky, but that happened to me like yesterday oh, and my autosave was turned on, so I didn't lose anything. That's great. It's a Halloween miracle. I know. <laughs> Kerwin says, uh, hearing I won't be able to pay your invoice is a, is a nightmare. Yes, it is. It's a terrifying sentence. <laughs> oh no, okay. we're battling the tape today. By heart. <laughs> Kerwin says, once upon a time, I awoke in the middle of the night. I arose to find emails from a client. It said, oh, I won't be able to pay your invoice. Ooh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> it's spooky, but I feel like really sorry. Yeah, it's a true that nightmare. Seriously. That we understand. Yeah. Man, I'm trying to think of anything from Ohio, where I'm from. There, I know there's a lot of like, prisons and asylums and those kind of things that are supposedly haunted. Okay, I love I love a good asylum ghost story. I don't know why. It just attracts me. <laughs> yeah. It's love just it. your thing. Yeah, your it's niche. just my thing. <laughs> Nuno says hello from Portugal. Hello Nuno. Hello. Happy Halloween. Thanks for joining us. Neither of us are dressed up as anything really scary. No. We're kind of just costumed. Well, you're not anymore. No. I guess I <laughs> am. Chad, is anyone else dressing up today? And if you're not, what has been your favorite costume ever? Let us know. So I'm from Taiwan, so like, is American only country that celebrate Halloween? Mm. Is it? Are you yeah. asking me? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I know that Japan likes to dress up for it. Okay. But I don't think they actually like partake in the spookiness. It's uh -huh. more of like everyone just dresses up like what they want to. Right. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a North American thing. Although, tell me if I'm wrong. Any Europeans in the house? Yeah. Let us know. Ooh, Stone says I grew up around the Jersey Devil. Yes. Oh. Have you heard of the Jersey Devil? No, what is it? Apparently, there's this like half goat, half human creature that lives in the woods in New what? Jersey. Yeah. There's, there's more to it, Stone. Maybe you can share if you'd like. Um, it's kind of like a local local legend. There's okay. the Mothman in West Virginia. I heard of Mothman. Yeah. 
Uh, Anthony says, in Austin, Texas, there's a statue in a cemetery. During the day, the arms move up, and during the night, the arms move down. Ooh, spooky. Alberto says, chupacabra, yes. That counts. Man. Isn't it great if there's like a ghost story time, like live stream, that'll be like, I will be all for it. Yeah. All day, just listen to people like telling me a ghost story. Turn down the lights. I know. Have a little flashlight in your I face. <laughs> no, the Jersey Devil is not Phil from Hercules, Kerwin. <laughs> so that would be sweet. I think Phil is a satyr, right? Um, this is another spooky story from Design Innovations. Waiting for your check and the client never got your invoice and you find out after three weeks. Oh. <laughs> it's like, Ugh. Yeah, that actually makes me sick. Um, oh my gosh, that's so scary, Justin. He says, do you know the movie The Babadook? Yes. Okay, I've never seen it, but I would like to. Uh, when the Babadook trailer came out, there's a scene where he knocks three times, and that's when you know he's around. And when the trailer ended, three knocks happened in my apartment, and no one else was there. <laughs> I, there was someone else there. It was the Babadook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Your new roommate, the Babadook. Surprise, <laughs> Justin. Oh. oh, yeah, Design Innovations, The Lady in White. Oh, yeah. It's a good one. A movie just came out, I think. Mirage wants to know the price of my books. These are my Creative Cloud libraries. You can really download it. Yeah, you can make your own for free if you have mm -hmm. a CC subscription. As many as you want. Kerwin says, I was going to be a vampire today, but my costume sucked. <laughs> Good oh, one. Oh. You must be I stopped. Just got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, Nuno says, In Portugal, not many people celebrate Halloween, mm -hmm. but recently, more and more people are joining in the Halloween okay. tradition. So more like a dress up for for fun. Yeah, like more like a social thing. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. I wish Tyler can pick up that. That'd be fun. Uh, yeah, right? Is there any kind of holiday that involves like dressing up like costumes or Not at all, everything spooky? is very serious. If it, we have this kind of uh, a death, it's like we literally, every single family would put out food, hmm. but we're like feeding the, the ghosts. I was like, not mm -hmm. actually belongs to anyone. They don't have a grave, they have an oh, unnamed entity. We just want them to feed them, you know, like just say, hey, you know, like just blast our family for good luck next yeah. year. Yeah. But it's very, very serious. Ooh. Yeah, there's no costume like involved. <laughs> no. Yeah. What time of year is it? Um, it depends on the lunar calendar. So mm -hmm. it's pro around September, the middle okay. of September. Cool. Yeah. That's like, um, I feel like <clears throat> that's like the autumn equinox yeah. time. Right. Or Everything is based on agriculture and moon. Oh, yeah. interesting. <laughs> Nor says, hello, with lots of spooky Ooh. emojis. Very good. Nuno says, carnival is a good costume holiday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. That's a fun one. All right, Tim has a spooky story for us. Also, what's up, Tim? How's it going? He says, this is a true story. Once I had a client and they wanted me to retouch something. And the second they contacted me, I knew something was just off. Everyone was nice to me, but just a bit too nice. You know when you can't quite put your finger on it, but you know something is terribly wrong? Like the moment right before the jump scare in a movie? <laughs> yes, I'm on the edge of my seat, Tim. Come on. Let us know. Tell us more. Yeah. Okay, so ignoring all of the red flags and the alarm bells, he accepted the job. You know what happened? They sent me an image to retouch, dot, 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 and, and, I need a flashlight. Whoa. <laughs> Paco, did you do that? Yeah. The lights just flashed. Yeah. Who's there? Whoa. <laughs> Eek. Oh, they sent you the document to retouch, and it was a Word document. Inside was a heavily compressed JPEG screenshot. I couldn't even sleep that night. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Tim, how did you survive? Seriously. <laughs> Are you still haunted? Ooh. Oh, cool, Kendall. So Kendall is from the San Diego area. Hi, Kendall. And Elfin Forest has everything from an abandoned asylum, that's just for you, perfect. Uh, love it. <laughs> to rumored cult houses, to a roaming woman in white ghost. 
10 out of 10, great spooky place to explore. Yay! I would totally do it. So spooky! I would totally do it. <laughs> That's so cool. I have to put this back on. By the way, what's up, Kendall? Everyone give Kendall a shout out. 10 out of 10, great spooky friend. That is not a true story, Tim. You're lying. <laughs> can't be. Just can't be. All right, chat, we've got about seven and a half minutes until we're gonna be doing our spooky chat and win, mm -hmm. where we will ask you a spooky question. And when you answer it, you'll be entered to win a $30 gift certificate to Moo.com. It's an amazing place to get all of your stationery and marketing needs met. You can get, let's see, business cards. I'm on the website right now. You can get stickers, menus, posters, invitations, greeting cards, envelopes, more envelopes, <laughs> <laughs> business card holders. Amazing. So we'll have $30 for you to use towards whatever you want. I use them for my business card. Their quality is so nice. Oh, nice. It's, it's beautiful. Do you have any tips for designing a business card as an illustrator? Um, what, what do you have on yours? I have like one of my, you know, back shot of me just working. Mm -hmm. So I draw my own illustration and put it in the center of the business card. Oh, Very nice. simple, just handles in the back. Mm -hmm. That's it. Because everything is the same handles. Perfect. So same as my domain, same as my Instagram, mm -hmm. all my socials. Yeah. Yeah. So that's it. So keep it simple and interesting. Mm -hmm. That's all my illustration is. Yeah. People literally just want a way to see your work and contact you. Thank you. Yep. That is it. So you can put your social handle, especially awesome if you have the same one for everything. Right. Your email address will probably be good if you were gonna uh, put on any kind of contact info and some sort of illustration would be great. <laughs> always rotate your, your canvas, that's what oh, my nice. teacher always taught us and I have this habit. I hope I'm not making everybody dizzy. Whoa. I keep turning my canvas. Mm -hmm. It's good though. Because your wrist works a certain way. It only bends certain directions. Right. So you have to work with it. Actually, last night when I was cutting out my little Creative Cloud uh -huh. logo, I thought of you because I was using an X-Acto knife and I was like rotating the thing I was working yeah. on so I wouldn't have to like cut at a weird angle and, and go, like Wah. cut my That's hand off. Okay. Yeah. I was like, Alec would be proud. Turn Ro that canvas. I'm Hashtag rotating my canvas. canvas. Yeah. Move that canvas. <laughs> oh no, Tim says green slime was oozing out of the monitor when he opened that word doc. <laughs> spooky. All right, any other spooky creative stories or local stories? Urban legends. Some of my favorite kind of urban legends are the ones that uh, someone from Austin just shared where it's like a statue where its arms move up and down. Mm -hmm. Like there's no explanation and it's not that scary, but it's just like, why does that you never know. That's why it's spooky. <laughs> yeah. Man, Val, what are you dressing up like today? Please tell me you're dressing up. You must be. <laughs> Let us know. Oh, I like the pink tote bag. It's a great example of your limited palette where yeah. you have the pink tote bag, the pink skin, the pink shorts. Yeah, so limited yes. palette, the key is using the color repeatedly. Mm -hmm. And so everything was same cohesive and tied together. So, little tip. Yeah. Yeah, when things aren't tied together, like when colors are just kind of thrown in willy-nilly, mm -hmm. I think I've become so trained to notice it. I'm like, you need some yellow over there because right. you have yellow over there and it needs, to, it needs to work. Yeah, and also like warm color just draws attention so much. Sometimes mm -hmm. you don't have enough cool to balance it out. It just, it just looks kind of odd. Yep, it's very true. And I will say, maybe we can take this time to also talk about different ways that we can reduce our waste and be kind to the earth that we live on, since that's what this illustration is about. Yeah. So this guy's holding a tote bag instead of a plastic bag. He's got his water bottle that he refills over and over again. There you go. The woman in the middle has her reusable cutlery. Very nice, I would like to start doing that. I hate throwing away like plastic stuff. I mean, I used to. I used. I used to don't do like bring my own utensils and and 
straws. Mm -hmm. But when I started doing it, I was like, it's, it's actually really simple. You know, mm -hmm. you just like pull out of a bag and start using and yeah. sort of just wipe it after. Right. With like napkins and actually it, it doesn't sting. It's, it's not as sturdy no. as we thought before you use it. Mm -hmm. It's actually really convenient. Yeah. And it's like if you go to the bathroom afterwards, you could even just wash them in the bathroom sink. Like Right. And you feel good about yourself because you're actually not throwing mm -hmm. more plastic waste into either recycle bin or waste bin. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Our good friend Paco over here rides his bike to work oh, that's and great. anywhere else pretty much every day. Keep that congestion out of the city. Keep those fumes down. Right. Very good. I try to make all of my purchases that I can secondhand. So thrifted clothing, thrifted furniture, all this stuff. It's very fun. Paco says bike for life. Yes. <laughs> and they're all wearing thrifted outfits. Yes, their clothing is definitely secondhand. Yes. Or vintage. Actually, I think my entire outfit is vintage today. Boom. I like using vintage. And Heck these yeah. sound very, very cool. Mm-hmm. One of a kind. Mm-hmm. All right, Navy says, my 11-year-old daughter is very good at drawing. Can you give her uh, advice on a web-based application that she can use to uh, practice drawing? Well, she could definitely get Fresco. I think Fresco is so easy and very um, beginning-friendly mm -hmm. because yeah. it literally, you just use brushes yep. and create one layers and you just start doing things. And the light brushes with watercolor, I think oh. kids will love it. Right. I'm going to use one. I'm going to create new layers and do the live brushes. Please show watercolors. us. Let's do watercolors soft. And let's do a really cool, cool color. Let's say this one. And you just, you just do it. Like oh. It's going to be like watercolor. It moves around. And then if you add a different color, it will you bleed do. with it. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Let's do Let's do orange. So oh. just blend it all together. Amazing. Kyle Webster would be so proud. Yeah, I think children will love this effect. Mm -hmm. But I think she'd pick it up really quickly. Yeah. Kids are smart. And it's very easy, so they will actually build up their confidence doing arts. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a really great way for people, like for kids, for feel encouraged yeah. to do their art. That's very important. Agreed. Yeah. Yes, so yes, it's yes, literally yes. just one iPad, one Apple Pencil, and the free app and she can experience, experience a lot of fun out of it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree, so I hope that helped Navy. And if your daughter has any questions she wants to ask on the live stream, uh, we're here pretty much every day. And it's obviously free to chat and ask questions and we have professionals mm -hmm. like Alec here all the time, happy to answer questions for kids and adults alike. <laughs> yeah, no problem Navy, glad you asked. Uh, Gina says, I use my own plate, cup, and cutlery at work so I don't have to waste paper and plastic. Thumbs Thank up. Thank you, Gina. Thumbs up. You're the best. You are the best. And just like keeping in mind, like if you do have to use a single use thing, like a takeaway box, or you have to use a plastic cup, like just realize that you're doing it. Like, oh, I wish I didn't have to do this right now. Yeah. So it just keeps you mindful and kind of aware. Right. Yeah. And I was, I was hearing this trick that people, a lot of recycling stuff, they want you to actually wash it. Mm. So they can do like actually shred all this plastic. So like if you have a food container that is plastic, make sure you rinse it really well yeah. and put it back. They, and they can make sure like when they pick out all the recycling, then they will actually pick those and just shred it and reuse yeah. it. Right. So I think wash it is really important step before you recycle any plastic rinse. if it's a food container. Definitely. Yeah. Perfect timing. It is now time for our chat and win. Woohoo! So we are going to be giving away a $30 gift certificate to moo.com. All you have to do is answer our question. So I want to ask them a spooky question. Okay. I don't know what though. <laughs> um, what? Uh, actually, do you believe in ghosts? Let us know. We'll be back. That's where we're going. We're back. Who believes in ghosts? This doesn't have to be a fight. You can just share your opinion. Yeah. Everyone thinks something different. So we're gonna pick a random winner from the chat. 
whoever answers the question to win the $30 gift certificate. Leah says, definitely. Gina says, yes, I believe in ghosts. <laughs> I even talk to them. Well, Nuno says, no. Uh, Nora says, I am a ghost. <laughs> same, same, same. <laughs> That's awesome. Hannah says, ghost stories are crazy. Design says, no, I do not believe in ghosts and laughs at us. <laughs> You only have to respond once, design. <laughs> Leah says, my grandparents are always with me. So believing in ghosts, there you go. <laughs> design does not believe in ghosts. <laughs> no, okay. No, no, that's, that's up to you to decide. I do not believe in goats or ghosts. Goats are real. Ghosts. Goats are real. A goat ghost. <laughs> Design, you are spamming the chat. Anthony says, can I access my CC libraries in Fresco? You're asking the right person, the CC librarian today. Uh, yes, you can, at least uh, certain parts of it. So you can access your brushes, your color palettes, I believe are coming soon if they're not there already. <laughs> Hannah Dickens, congratulations. You are the winner. Congratulations, Hannah. Ooh. So Hannah, you have won a $30 gift certificate to Moo.com mm. where you can get all of your stationary needs met. And if you do use it, please let us know what you make. In chat, if you did not win, you can still get 15% off just because you're here and you're awesome. You can go to Moo.com slash Adobe Live. And that will give you 15% off. It expires on December 31st. So make sure you get those Use discounts your code. in. Mm -hmm. Definitely. <laughs> Design Innovation says, I never win. Maybe it's because you, sp you spam the chat, Design <laughs> Innovation. <laughs> Spammer. Yeah, no, really. You'll win someday. Yeah. Just keep joining. It's totally random. It's luck. Mm hmm. Jason, what's up? How you doing? Hi, Jason. Hello, hello. Not, not the scary Jason, right? Jason <laughs> Voorhees. Ooh. Nora says, Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters. Da -da 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 -da. Ba -na 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 -na. We were listening to uh, Halloween music on the way to work. Uh -huh. There's a lot of good Halloween bops at the Monster Mash. Right. We got the Witch Doctor. We got Werewolf Bar Mitzvah. That's a good one. What is that? <laughs> <laughs> it's from the show 30 Rock. It's, oh, okay. It's very funny with Ooh. Tracy Morgan. <laughs> Boys becoming men, men becoming wolves. <laughs> <laughs> cool, so he's holding two tote bags. Two I tote didn't bags. Realize. Boom. Since he moved from the Midwest, uh, coming to California, was mm -hmm. it weird to have to start using reusable bags when you went to the grocery store? Actually, Taiwan, we already use uh, reusable bags for many years. Yes. Like um, the city my brother live in, Taipei, mm -hmm. we, like all the plastic, you know, you use like a bin, uh, the bin bag. Mm. You need to purchase from a certain kind of bag, oh. certain size through um, the certain company. There's, they are like recyclable cool. and compostable. Mm -hmm. So everything was standardized. There you go. You can't use your own bags. You cannot. Yeah. Dame. Yeah. Wow, that's great. Yeah, moving from the Midwest, it was amazing coming here. It's like, wait, people actually bring their own bags? Oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Back in Ohio, they'd like load you up with 30 plastic bags, even if you were just buying milk. They're like, do you want me to quadruple bag this for you? Quadruple? <laughs> no, thank you. I'll carry it with my hands, my human hands. <laughs> Stone says dark matter holds together our universe, but it cannot be seen, only felt. Ooh. Mm. Are you saying that dark matter is ghosts? Grace says Taiwan represent. Hey, Grace. <laughs> She's my dear friend, known for years. Oh, hi, Grace. Welcome. Thanks She's for coming. She's also a very talented illustrator. Grace, what's your handle? Put that. Share your hand. Share your handle, Grace. Throw that Insta in the chat. Let's see it. Very cool. Also, chat. I don't know if you knew this, but I like to throw this in there sometimes. If you click on people's little icons, their little avatars, that will take you to their Behance portfolio, mm. so you can check out people's work if they have any up there. Very nice. <laughs> Robert says Bigfoot is my answer. Your answer for what? For life? Bigfoot is the answer. For the ghost story. Yeah, okay. There okay, is Bigfoot actually a ghost? 
heck no. Ray is, it's an animal. He's know. the missing link. Mm-hmm. Sasquatch, Bigfoot, Yeti. What other kind of names are there for Bigfoot? Big Hairy Man. And do you guys have a Halloween movie or Halloween show must watch Ooh. every year? That'd be good to share for people, right? Let us know. Yeah, yeah. we got to watch stuff tonight. See what's up there. Um, you said Eli was a good one. Eli's a new one just released on Netflix. Mm -hmm. Love it. Nice. I think Nightmare Before Christmas. <gasps> yes. Always great. Yeah. Hocus Pocus. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Totally. Duh. A Halloween Town. Yeah. Another Disney Channel yeah. fave. I watched Hocus Pocus, I think it was last year on Halloween, and I was amazed by like the adult themes in yeah. that movie. Like, this is a Disney movie, what's going on? It's pretty good though. Des Design says The Missing Link is a good movie. The Missing Link, yes. Mm. What else, chat? My friend Ren, who you know, Ren. Ren. Um, she really likes to show people the movie House, or Haosu. It's a Japanese horror movie from the 70s that is yes. very bad. <laughs> and it's a great every year watcher. It's like that movie is so bad it turned good. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. I like love the worst movie in history. Like Shark Needles. Yes, exactly. The Meg. Ooh, Voodoo Val says Haunting of Hill House. Is oh God, that good. show. Oh. We were just talking about that before the stream started. Yeah. Yes. Thank Freaks you, Val. I think American Horror Story mm -hmm. is pretty scary. Like, I can't really watch it <laughs> that often. It's pretty dark. The second season, Asylum, is my favorite. Of course well, it you. is. Yeah. <laughs> Psychos oh and murderers. What's the best? <laughs> sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kerwin says, every year for Halloween, I watch my friends celebrate on social media while I stare out my window, alone, sad. You're not alone. The ghosts are with Stop you, it. Kerwin. <laughs> Stop it. John says, the X-Files are a good watch. Yes. yes. I want to believe. Very nice. There's a new Hocus Pocus in production. Really? What? Whoa. Amazing. Yeah. Ah, uh, Thackeray Binks. One of my first loves. <laughs> <laughs> Which, after watching it last year, I was like... Wait, what? What, <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> Design Innovation says, Dude, where's my car? That's not a Halloween movie. You crazy. <laughs> Ooh, The Walking Dead scene in marathon mode. Oh, yes. Scary. Norse is asking, who here likes movies like Saw? Do you know the Saw movies? I do like it when I was young, yeah. but right now is that I can't. It's yeah, just too it's much. It's just too much. Too much. <laughs> too much. But I'm amaz amazed by the writer though. The writing is that how do they actually think of all this way? All these dark and twisted things. Yes, I'm just saying, these, these writers are really good. Ooh, there's they're something. Very creative. <laughs> Tima says, hello everyone from planet Mars. Hello, Tima. Hello. Are you dressing up today, Tima? Are you celebrating the Hallow's Eve? Hallow's Eve. Yes. <laughs> nice, so we're still working on the skin tone of our last character. Having that nice smooth line mm. with the smoothness turned up a little bit. So I found out like for me to draw my legs is very tricky because legs is a certain rhythm. Mm -hmm. You don't want to you don't want to make it look like a stick when you simplify them. Yeah. So it's really nice to get see the the inner line right here, right here is easy to get it straight. Mm -hmm. But you need to have that curve on outer edges. Yes. So you get that rhythm of the legs. That's very important. So you don't you don't look like there's just a two stick stick on the torso. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when they're moving so dynamically. Right. I totally agree. I love drawing leg curves. Yeah. So nice and fluid. So nice. Tima says, yes, we're dressing up like the cast of Gilligan's Island. I'm the professor, <laughs> the bearer of good and bad news. Nice. nice. I used to watch Gilligan's Island all the time. Love that show. Damien says Beetlejuice. It's a good one. Beetlejuice. Yes. That is a great Halloween movie. Design says, I watch. I can't watch scary movies. I literally can't sleep. Sorry. They're scary. Scary for a reason. That's what it's made for. Mm -hmm. Make you not sleep. Does anybody like to watch or play scary video games? Yes. Ooh. Ooh. Mice, the Silent Hill. 
<laughs> that game really freaked me out. Pyramid head. Yeah. It's scary. The nurse. Oh my god, I can't. Yeah. Oof. I watched those. I watched my brothers playing those when I was entirely too young. Way too young. Anybody in chat ever played uh, Doki Doki Literature Club? What is it? It's a scary game. Oh yeah? Mm-hmm. It's a scary game that masquerades as a not scary game, <laughs> which makes it all the scarier. <laughs> I don't want to spoil it for anyone though. Ooh, Robert says you should watch The Munsters. That's Munster. a good show. The Addams Family. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. Kerwin likes to play Dead Space. Nuno likes to play Resident Evil. Oh, big Resident Evil fan eee. here. Love it. Is that the one with the Umbrella Corporation? Yes, okay. without zombies. Raccoon City. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Kerwin says, is laughing at Doki Doki. Kerwin, have you played it? If you haven't played it, you can't laugh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> Nora says Sleepy Hollow, that's a good one. Silent Hill, Silent Jaws, Hill. Scream. Man, Sleepy Hollow is a good one. It is really good. It's got that awesome like Victorian flair. <laughs> Resident Evil 2 remake was good. Oh my god, that game is so good. <laughs> yes. Too spooky, too many jump scares. I forget which one it was, but I played the Oculus, like the VR version of, I think it was Resident Evil or maybe Silent Hill. It was so scary. Is it like shooting zombies no it's like you're in a house and there's like crazy people that are trying to kill you oh maybe it's silent hill i'm not sure but you know you're in vr like you know it's not real but it just feels so bad because you're literally visually just surrounding with all this mm -hmm. creation it's like yeah that's, and you're wearing earbuds yeah. that are like sound canceling so yeah. that's all you hear you can't hear your friends laughing at you as you scream Oof. Steve says, not too many horror movies scare me, but the one called Devil, where there's six people in an elevator and one of them is the devil, um, that's a scary one. Ooh, ooh, that sounds like a psychological thriller. Edward Scissorhands, anything Tim Burton. And Guillermo del Toro, that'd be good. Oof, there's a game called PT. I've never played it, but I heard it's really scary. Hmm. So Val says. PT. Hmm. Any other scary, scary content to consume? There are scary comics you can read. Japanese horror comics. The Japanese horror, um, what's the name? Junji Ito? Yes. Is that it? Yes. With the snail and the swirling stuff. Oh, no, oh. no, 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 no. <laughs> the holes. Yeah. No, thank yeah, you. But one thing he can draw really pretty uh, girl figure. Yeah. His girl figure is always like beautiful ladies. Beautiful ladies mm -hmm. and yeah. Junji Ito is a master. Voodoo Val says Hereditary is still the scariest movie on earth. I agree. agree. That is the only scary movie that's ever stuck with me, like for years. Still stuck with it. Saw it a year ago. Yeah, the last scene is just. A lot. <laughs> I watched it on an airplane, and oh, I was still do. terrified. Oh, I want to like break my glasses in half. It was so I'm, scary. <laughs> There's one thing I didn't feel. Uh, Leah says I would have a heart attack. I jump when the toast comes out of the toaster. <laughs> <laughs> I do too, though. <laughs> it's scary. You always forget that you're toasting toast, and then it just pops out and gets you. Ooh, John, that's a great question. What is the difference between Illustrator and Adobe Fresco? What are the advantages? Well, I so can, would you like to talk on that? Yeah, so Fresco, if you use a pixel brush, so everything, every image is constructed with tiny, tiny pixels, so you can see there's a like square, a little pixel right mm -hmm. here. But if you use Illustrator, which is the vector art, everything created was, every color created was by math. My, correct me, correct me if I'm wrong. It's no, you're right. I'm algorithm the math, so you can zoom in infinitely. There's no blurriness or dark. Yeah, you can see at the top of his screen it's zoomed in. Yeah. L many, many hundreds 12, of thousands. Percent, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but you don't see the pixelated, blurry edges. Yeah. That's the differences with 
on Photoshop and Vector Ari. Right. So Jean is asking the difference between Illustrator and Fresco. So oh, sorry. Fresco is kind of it has pieces of Illustrator within it, like these vector brushes, right. which are awesome. Right. It's like using the blob brush in Illustrator. But you can also, with that vector brush, use the pixel brushes and also use the live brushes, like the watercolor and the oil paints. Yeah. Um, and you can have them all in the same canvas working together and interacting, which is pretty great. Uh, I would also say that Illustrator is kind of a behemoth. It's a huge app that people use for a million different things. Mm -hmm. Tons of graphic designers use it, UI, UX designers, actual illustrators. I've always thought that name was a little confusing. <laughs> I don't know tons of illustrators <laughs> who actually illustrate in Illustrator. But um, Fresco takes basically the drawing and painting parts of Illustrator and puts it into one app. So this is really for drawing and painting and illustrating, this entire app is which is amazing. Good for us illustrators. So I hope that helps. And then once you have all of these layers and your illustration complete, you can then open this file in Illustrator or Photoshop if you need to finish things up. Hope that helps. Stone says, I have Hereditary on Amazon Prime. I've never watched it. It looks like a scary movie to watch tonight. Ooh, Stone, be careful. It's a scary one. It gets in your mind. Like, it's not really a jump scary movie. It's the, the mood they create that's so so well. There's, like, the sense of dread throughout mm -hmm. that entire movie is cranked up to 11. Like, oh my gosh, it, you feel so uncomfortable. You're like, no. Yeah. Eek! I don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Design says, can you import into Illustrator from the app? I think you can. I think you can open the files in Illustrator. I never tried it. I believe we can. Yeah. I mean, you're using the blob brush, so I would think that you can. <laughs> the ending of Hereditary was strange. It definitely goes there. It goes places. <laughs> Ooh, team is talking about there's a production comp company that uh, made these videos called The Faces of Death, and it was very scary. Ooh, that sounds scary. Is it like a mask? Yeah, or... tell us about it, Tima. Oh. What made it scary? <laughs> Nora wants to know, why is it that in horror movies there's always a group of people who always get picked off one by one? That's like the classic horror movie trope. I don't know, I think it's because so, we're scared to be alone. Yeah. Easy to isolate them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Jason says the ending of Hereditary is kind of like the ending of Witch. That's true. Have you seen Witch? Yes. They're the same creator, right? Like, same writer or director? Oh, yeah. Huh? Is it? I think you're right. Witch was cool. Witch is really cool. I just love, like, the historical accuracy of it. It felt and like a very nice slice of that terrible, terrible life. Right. The last <laughs> year, the new one was... Um, this year, actually, Midsummer, the mm -hmm. one I think is the same director or, or writer. Right. So those, that Hereditary and Midsummer are the same, and I don't know if which that, is okay. the same, but it seems like it would be. Right, it's a really s similar mood. Yeah, I actually haven't seen Midsummer. I'd really like to. It's good. I, it's hard to find someone to go with me to see it that hasn't already seen it. <laughs> What's up, Chloe? Hi, Chloe. From Malaysia. Welcome, welcome. What's up, Zorro? Good to see ya. We've got about 40 minutes until we're gonna be doing design feedback. So if you are new, design feedback is a chance for us to look at your daily creative challenge designs and give you a little bit of uh, critique and feedback and help you make it the best it can be so that then you can make tweaks and upload it for your final portfolio. So Jesus was streaming right before us doing today's daily creative challenge. The challenge is all about Halloween and making a portrait look super scary. So mm -hmm. we showed you a couple different techniques in Photoshop to do that. So if you want to get feedback, maybe you uh, should post it on Discord. And if we can pop over to my screen really quick, I'll show you how to do that. So Discord is a server where you can join the creative community. We're here 24 seven. If you go to feedback, current challenge and scroll to the bottom, you can click the plus button and upload an image. 
and that would be your challenge from today. So upload your work in progress here, ask a question, maybe you're not sure about the composition or the color palette, uh, and we'll give you some feedback in about 40 minutes. And if you want to join Discord, the link is bit.ly slash PS Discord, capital P, capital S. All right, the three figures are done. Wahoo! I'm just gonna easily drop in the color in the background. That's just a little sprout right here. Mm -hmm. Color I pick. I love that shape for like a plant. It's such a quintessential sprout shape. It's life. It's very cute. One time I was riding the train and there was this girl on the train and she had a little hair clip and it was a little sprout coming out. It was like coming out the center of her head. <laughs> like, where'd she get it? Yeah. I'm like, are you an anime character? Who are you? This is amazing. <laughs> Kerwin wants to know what kind of scary movies everyone likes. Do you like a thriller, a religious one, monsters, a slasher? I like the uh, psychological thrillers that have a little hint of supernatural in them. I like the ones most like haunted. Like Ooh, ghost. ghosts. I love those. And yeah. jump scared. Must watch. <laughs> Ooh, I don't like seeing the jump scares. I love jump scare. No, thanks. <laughs> Uh, Robert's talking about the new movie called The Lighthouse with Robert Pattinson oh, and Willem Dafoe. I really want to watch that one. That looks so interesting. Mm. Hmm. Kevin says The Thing is a good horror movie. The Thing. The thing. I've never seen The Thing. Neither. I always get The Thing and It mixed up. Right. They're like so vague. It. <laughs> the Thing. The Thing. <laughs> oh, Jason, what about Brightburn? Anyone like that? I watched that on a plane as well. Was it good? I like the idea. Uh -huh. Have you heard of it? No, I never heard so of it. So it's basically the idea of like, what if Superman came to Earth but turned out to be evil instead oh, of good? Right. So like this kid is growing up and he's realizing he has powers, but he takes the negative path instead of the good path. Right. Um, but yeah, I really like the idea. Very good concept. But I don't know if I really like the actual movie. Hmm. It was kind of short. It felt like very simple, like A, B, C, done. Right. Get the story done. Mm -hmm. Nor says, I know what you did last summer. That's a good one. Hitchcock's The Birds. I think that's one of the first scary movies I ever saw. So spooky. The place where they filmed it is close to us, up in Bodega Bay. There's a little cafe there called The Birds Cafe. And it is one, delicious, two, super cute, three, that has all of this like paraphernalia from the, or memorabilia from the movie. It's very cool. Anothai says, Halloween, everybody. Halloween. Halloween. <laughs> Ooh, that's spooky, Tima. I don't like that. Uh, Zora wants to know have you ever used Fuse for figures? So Fuse is like a 3D software. No, I haven't. Mm -mm. So all my all my work is literally just 3D, no 2D. Yeah, flat. drawings. We were just drawings and with the graphic shape. Mm -hmm. Zoro, that's a good idea though, because yeah. you can pose the figures however you want and then right. use them as reference if you'd like to. That's cool. Oh yeah, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That's a nice cult classic scary movie. Yes. <laughs> Scared me as a kid. I think I saw that as a kid too, Sonia. Also scary. Whoa, Zoro, that's cool. He says, we have about a million crows fly into town at dawn and fly out of Vancouver at dusk. Mm. Miles of crows. Why do they fly in and out? Yeah. What are they running from? They roost somewhere else, I'm guessing. Spooky. Ooh, Design Innovation says Final Destination. That's a scary set of mm -hmm. stories. The first two ones are really good, in my opinion. Yeah, mm. I guess I don't really know the difference right. between them. <laughs> Ooh, it makes me scared to go on like roller coasters and right. just be Are you a big a roller machinery. coaster fan? I'm not, You're so not? I'm okay. also just scared to do it in general. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, Kerwin says a scary anime is Higurashi. Mm. I don't know that one. 
That's the map. Higurashi. Oh, I have When They Cry. Yeah, I oh. think they made, this is originally a game, I thought. Or maybe it was a visual novel and then they turned it into an anime. Corpse Party, that one was also, I think, a book for a game first. I think a lot of Japanese manga, they base on a story that is really realistic. Mm. And I realize sometimes it look really scary and very true. Yeah, it's like too real. Too real. <laughs> Real human brokenness right mm -hmm. there. Uh, Zoro really likes the American Horror Story 1984. That's on right now. I haven't watched that one mm -hmm. yet. I still need to finish the first season. <laughs> I'm still not past it. I just have to keep stopping. It's too, it's too much. And maybe people don't like Halloween. So when it is Halloween, what do you do instead? If you're not into all the spooky stuff. Do you decorate for Christmas? We're almost there. Decorate for Thanksgiving. Leah says, I love Death Note. That's a good one. The anime, not the movie. Yeah, for sure. Do people really like actually start uh, decorating for Christmas right after Halloween? I saw a lot of Wet meme, mm -hmm. yeah, but I'm not sure it's true. Right. Does anybody do it? Yeah, let us know. We're decorating for whatever holiday. Uh -huh. Right after Halloween. Steve says, Alec, your work is awesome. Thank you, Steve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he wants to get back to the artist at work. Enough of the spooky talk. <laughs> Agreed. So you finish the sprouts and you're organizing your layers by just dragging them around. Yeah. Oh yeah. How's he gonna do it? How's he gonna fill the backgrounds? How would you like to fill? Pixel. Pixel, please. Yes. Nice, it's that easy. I like that function. It actually asked me if you want a vector of pixel. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Right, because they're two different layer styles. Right. Pixer, pixer. Pixel. pixel or vector. All right. So now I'm going to detail. Look at all those layers. So what I do on my character, I, I always will do a drop shadow around the around the chin and neck. Oh, interesting. Because with with black color, because you use that to create a highest contrast oh, with the face. Gotcha. People will think it's odd. It's like I don't have cast shadowing anywhere, but it sort of makes sense. It's just like the neck here, this part. Right, because your head comes forward. Right, and you got a more contrast there. I'm interested to see how you pull that off. Steve says, my dad put up some Christmas lights on our new house in 1970, and they stayed up for decades. Mm. Oh my gosh, are they still there? Seems like a fire hazard. <laughs> Whoa. So you made a new layer on top of all of your other ones. Right. Now you're getting that shape just right. Yeah, okay. Just sort of create. Nice. Making more shapes, filling them in. Mm -hmm. Cool, very high contrast. Boom. And clean the edges a little. Okay, so you're using your touch shortcut mm -hmm. to use the same brush texture. Uh, Kevin wants to know, do either of us actually use watercolor or gouache or other mediums in illustration? In traditional, like do we still do traditional illustration You know, before I start using um, iPad mm -hmm. or Photoshop, I actually, after I graduated school, I, I, I using watercolor mainly for my mm. all my work. Really? And I changed all my portfolio into digital because it's way much quicker. Yeah. Yeah. Right, now we have these beautiful watercolor brushes. Yeah. In fresco. Yeah, I still love to use ink, like specifically just black ink or colored ink to do line work. Um, I love watercolor as well. 
colored pencil. I used colored pencil to make my Creative Cloud library. Yeah. I broke out my Prismacolors just for that last night. Amazing. Uh, Kerwin has a question for you. What did you use before Fresco, and could you see yourself doing the majority of your work in Fresco from now on? Before Fresco, watercolor. Mm -hmm. And yes, um, I literally right now just create all my work on iPad. Yeah. And the all Fresco. Of it. Yeah. So now the I don't I, I barely go on uh, desktop right now. So now Fresco is this portable app. I, I literally just create all my work using Fresco. Do yeah. you ever take your illustrations into Photoshop to like finish them? If I do, if I'm making a GIF, yeah. I will create all these layers right here, prep them, organize into folders, mm -hmm. and upload them on, uh, transfer them to Photoshop, and do a timeline to nice. animate GIF. Um, in my iPad, I have Fresco and I have like a GIF maker app. So yeah. I like export all of my stuff right. onto my iPad and then just use that to make a GIF and just upload it to Instagram from there. Nice. It's like I don't have to touch my computer at all. Why do we even have you, computer? <laughs> <laughs> we just need an iPad. So I can put stickers on it, I guess. I could do that with an iPad, too. Uh, Steve says, my friend in Scotland does gouache on paper. She's an incredible artist. For That's sure. awesome. Gouache is so beautiful. Such a tactile, kind of thick paint. A really good quality of like gouache. Can you paint it like watercolor-like? Because You can also use it as like an oil painting mm -hmm. like, because it's so opaque and yeah. thick. Yeah, it has such a... Uh, very versatile. Very versatile, yep. yep. <laughs> now the chat is talking about GIF versus GIF. I'm a GIFer. I'm going to stay a GIFer till the day that I to the, that I GIF it. <laughs> are you GIF or are you Did GIF? Did I say GIF or GIF? I don't remember. I think I, I, think I vary sometimes. <laughs> I can't even remember. You like try to read the room and then choose which one you're going to do. GIF. 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 All right, chat, what do you think it is? GIF or GIF? I know it's officially GIF, I'm pretty sure, but. Yeah, I remember the one, um, the file creator actually called it GIF. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I don't care. You're not my dad. <laughs> <laughs> you're GIF's dad, but you're not mine. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so now you can see the faces with the uh, cast shadow. Wow. Even you you smaller the image you still have that nice concentration focal point mm -hmm. on the face so i'm going to do it with three characters too beautiful such a stark shadow i love it i would be scared to do something so stark i'd like want to turn the opacity down or something but i like how you're just like no it's black it's black yes mm -hmm. because i know i'm going to do line work with hand you know like this like creases of the mm -hmm. the clothes in black so everything will tie it up together so i'm so I'm just using that black for nice. everything to unify. Oh, we've got Kara saying a hard G for, for sure. Hard GIF. GIF. Hard GIF. That GIF. 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 <laughs> that sounds very French. Design Innovation says GIF. GIF. <laughs> <laughs> sounds like goofy. <laughs> uh, Steve says the first word in the name is graphic, so hard G. GIF. Well, good. I respect. Speaking of pronunciation, Kara, I feel like I've asked you this before, but is it Kara or Kara? I think it's Kara, right? Right? Am I wrong? Let me know. Stone is now asking about the SVG format. Mm -hmm. It's a good format. It's transparent background. You can use it in animation. I never use it for... I had to use it um, when I was working with, mm -hmm. what was it called? It's an app that doesn't exist anymore. It's like it was deleted out of my head, but it was kind of like a, an animation app. Okay. So it's good for when you have moving parts and web stuff. <laughs> now everyone's posting awesome artists in the chat. Gouache painters. Yeah, sure it. Woohoo. Gouache always has a nice kind of vintage feel, in my opinion. So there's awesome vintage work made with gouache. Gouache. So you're adding the second shadow. Mm -hmm. And is it going on its own layer, or are you having all the shadows on one It's layer? on its own layer. Nice. Because, um, oh, sorry, you say the each cast shadow. Mm -hmm. I put it in the same, same layer. I see. Okay, yeah. cool. 
all the same things exist mm -hmm. together. And one cool thing about fresco people is um, you can make groups out of your layers too, super right. easily. So if you just like long just press on a layer and drag it. And just go down. Yep, it would make a, a little group. I have one right here in my background. Oh, I just nice. want testing the colors. Mm -hmm. and then you just, then there you go. Double tap it. Double tap. You'll, sh you'll see it. Boom, boom. Speaking of double tap, Zombieland is a good spooky movie to watch Ooh. at Halloween time. I knew it was Kara. Thank you. Okay, I'll remember. Uh, Paul says Scott Wills is my all-time favorite gouache guy. Scott Will. Let me look that up. Scott Wills artist. Ooh, beautiful atmospheric oh kind of landscape work. Wow. Well. Look Whoa. at that. Oh, Samurai Jack. Yeah, that makes sense. Oh, look at that moon. Look at that nice magenta Love with this that. kind of like chocolatey brown sky. What? Ooh, that makes me want to draw. That's so inspiring to me. Just a light, light and shadow they create with gouache. Oh my mm -hmm. God. Beautiful. Jason's wondering, how was Zombieland 2? <laughs> Zombieland 2 is a wild ride. <laughs> the, it's not an amazing movie, but I enjoyed it for what it is. You know what I mean? Do you know what I mean? I haven't watched it. It's, it's, it's all right. It's fun. Yeah. It's a fun romp. All right, we're adding that last shadow. It's so interesting to see how you shape them. Like, how are you choosing these shapes? Um, I would just decide one angle mm -hmm. from the top right to the left. Okay, so the lighting is coming from the top right. Yes, so I will do the same on all three. But sometimes if you don't have to do the same angle, you say this is too light source, which yeah. is fine. As long as the mm -hmm. image makes sense and looks good, I think for editorial illustration, it doesn't matter that much. Right, that's very true. I would say for any illustration, as long as it's intentional. Right. <laughs> Erica, hello. I was texting Erica last night, uh, uh -huh. having her help me choose on a Halloween costume, and she helped me decide on Creative Cloud Librarian. So thank Yay. you, Erica. I appreciate you. Erica was rocking a very amazing Arthur costume last weekend. The best Arthur I've ever seen. And Kendall was rocking a very cute little skeleton costume. Just the best. Erica, do you like my uh, library books? We've got brushes. We've got character assets. We've got Adobe Live assets. You can borrow them from the library anytime. Bird Box, that's also another spooky-ish movie yes. you could watch tonight. Nice. Those fine little details. Ooh, cut in the shadow nice and sharp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's so funny, at, at this point in the process, I have to look at like where you're actually drawing and not just at the screen, because you're making these tiny little- Tiny, tiny, tiny. Yeah. Let me zoom in more. So for eyes, let's do the detail right here. Ooh, the best part. You get to actually draw in the features. You know, for me, it's like a simpler, the the detail is for me it takes really long because sometimes because it's so you need to get it right too yeah. long that the, the dot is too long too short mm -hmm. the whole facial ex express changed yeah it has to actually look like she's looking at something when her eyes are just lines right it's tough so you know you know like so i, I think this might be too thick okay you're so zooming yeah. out to see how it will actually look yeah. in real life Tiny little edits. <laughs> Steve wants to know, is this character growing Wolverine claws? That's her reusable cutlery. Yeah, <laughs> fork, spoons, and knife. Zaza, zaza, zaza. Are you ready to kill? To fight. To fight. That's it, fight. Food fight. Mm-hmm. Hard for environment. Oh yeah, Paul is excited for Pascal Campion to be on the stream next week. Mm. Pascal's an amazing mm. illustrator. Uh, that's going to be streaming from Max when we are there 
next week. I'm going to be hosting him. Yay. I'm going to be fangirling the whole time. Super duper cool. So yeah, chat. We're going to be at Max next week. That's a creativity conference uh, that Adobe throws. I think there's going to be over 15,000 people there this year. Pretty, pretty big in the LA Convention Center. So we are going to be live streaming the keynotes every morning or on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, and that's where there's going to be a lot of announcements of like new products, product updates, uh, new features, that kind of thing. So it is a very, very good thing to watch if you want to be in the know about what's going on at Adobe with Creative Cloud. Um, and then right after the keynotes every morning, we're going to hop over to our live streaming booth on the convention floor, and we're going to be talking about the things that were just announced. So we'll have people from Adobe there, designers in the industry giving their first impressions of the new updates. All the good stuff. Very excited. <laughs> Erica says cutlery claws would be so convenient. Always ready to picnic. Let me cut that for you. <laughs> I would just want one, just like a spork as a thumb. Oh my god, yes. Sporks up! <laughs> it's like a switchblade. Right. <laughs> awesome. Oh, Anthony, I hope you can go to Max another time. I know, it is pretty expensive. It's a pretty big conference. But it's worth it. You meet all different type of people and creators and... You can meet me! Yeah, Adobe staff. <laughs> I don't think that's worth it, but just nice meeting me. <laughs> But meeting everyone else, probably. Yeah, you can make awesome connections and also take workshops and listen to speakers. Uh, are most of the speakers going to be posted online like last year? I believe so. I think they might already be on the uh, Max website. And then we will have a schedule, I believe, sometime soon posted for us. But I don't think there's anywhere to find that right now. So for years, I always do this things, and they're, they turn into my oh the ear little style. Cool. So recognizable. You can, as an artist, you should add your own recognizable styles. Mm -hmm. How you draw things, how you draw the nose, the, the eyes. Very nice. I have one, too. I haven't really actually thought about it. It's kind of similar to that. Yeah, it's like this. Yeah. It turns you a style, your own style. Nice. Okay. Chat, do you have your own ear drawing style? Everyone has like their own noses and eyes. Yeah, so if you go to the max.adobe.com and click on the speakers uh, panel, you will at least see the keynote speakers. So we've got M. Night Shyamalan, which I'm so excited mm -hmm. for. We've got Dave Grohl, super cool. John Mulaney is going to be hanging out. Chantel Martin, visual artist. Billy Eilish is going to be there. <gasps> Billy Eilish. What's up, Billy? <laughs> How you doing? Takashi Murakami, amazing artist who just worked with Billy to make a music video. Lauren Holm, homework. Spencer Nugent, Paula Scheer, all kinds of good people. Paula Scheer, mm -hmm. big fan. Yeah, lots of goodness. And then we have even more speakers. And Anya was um, on the live stream a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. That's cool. Man. Very cool. Sarah Bell's going to be here. Oh, I live streamed with Sarah Bell like a year ago. So cool. Curvin Brousseau, Tuna Bora. Very, very amazing. Pascal Campion, Tad Carpenter, another amazing illustrator and designer. Lots of Adobe people. We got Tammy Coker coming, Tracy Ching, amazing illustrator, Lisa Congdon. Now I'm fangirling. Very cool. Unmesh Dinda, who has a really cool tutorial channel called Pix Imperfect. Mm. Makes really good content. Aaron Draplin, of course. The list goes on and on, to be honest. Wow. All right, I need to stop looking at this. Yeah. <laughs> Robzilla, yep, yep, yep. They always get comedians to do the sneaks. Sneaks are awesome. I love sneaks, it's so fun. Paul Tranny, obviously, is gonna be there. He's gonna be streaming a lot of the live streams from Adobe Live. 
a lot of the Photoshop stuff. So stick around if you want to see Paul. I don't know if Eric's going to be there. If Eric is in the chat, are you going to Max? Let us know. Pix and Perfect, I've been waiting for him to do a live stream. Yeah, he's going to be on the stream. It's going to be great. Will Muscaton be there? I'm not sure. I haven't seen them on the list yet. Uh, Hoodspa Design is going to be there. I love those Hood Sisters. Amazing. So cool. So cool. Right. Too many good people. Look away now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Tiffany Haddish was really funny last year in Sneaks. Very, very good. So now you're adding the little details that are invisible in a flat illustration. So you're right. adding the little curves. And always turn off your um, face sketches and see how mm -hmm. it feels. She's got some built shoulders. She's right. been doing lifts. If you think it's too built, that's, we can erase this line so the muscle oh. definition is not too yeah. much. Yeah. Right. So always turn it on and off and see. Mm -hmm. And how did you figure out where to put these lines? Is it just from like studying how clothing folds? Um, because this this arm is more forward, mm -hmm. so it's supposed and it's looking down. So the line's supposed to be this way. Yeah. Instead of going this way in. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like if you were to curve it the other way, it would look different. Yeah, it's, it's more an, like an anatomically mm -hmm. will make more sense that way. Definitely. And I think if you do have trouble deciding where to put these curves, like if you're just starting out with illustration and drawing, just looking at how clothing works, like on a real body, right. how fabric folds on top of form, that's going to inform you and let you know how it works. Yeah, Hoodspa is going to be in the marketplace so you can pick up some prints and other goodies, says mm -hmm. Erica. Oh, love them. They have really cute pins. They have one that's like a lucky cat that says make your own luck. <gasps> They have a really, really amazing handbooks, handbook for freelance designers where they help you with pricing and starting a business. And it's also just a beautifully designed book. You should definitely pick that up. What will he do next? The thumb. Let's cool. do this. No good impression of fingers, but yeah. not really. I was gonna ask, were you actually gonna put lines there or just let it kind of look like a mitten? Yeah. Very good. Uh, Paul is wondering, are you gonna shadow the entire body or are you just gonna show the crease overlap? Just show the crease overlap. Yeah. yeah. If we pop over to my screen really quick, we can see that's really distinctive of Alex style. Let's go to this one. We showed this yesterday. So we've got these creases, no actual like local shadows, but the creases do kind of denote where things are moving, where things are overlapped. It really depends on uh, artist's style. Some people really enjoy doing. So for the, the white pants, I do a little cast shadow yeah. on the leg because mm -hmm. I just want to draw more attention into the bottom part of this main character. Yeah. So I, I intentionally put the black and white right there to draw attention. Nice. So if it really depends on some artists really enjoy doing lights and shadow, but I'm not really doing that. Mm -hmm. And it all depends on how I feel like the balance of the image looks like. Right. Yeah. And it's how your style has evolved. It's shown here really nicely on all of these figures. Like we have nice lines where things are overlapping, but then no outline when right. things are not. Very cool. Yes, 10 minutes until design feedback. Mm. I need to look in Discord and see if we have any submissions yet. I don't think we do yet. Okay, chat. So Jesus was streaming the Halloween challenge right before this. And if you are currently working on it or want to throw something together and get feedback on it, we would be happy to look at it in about eight or nine minutes. Um, I would like to look at at least three. Spend a little bit of time. So even if you're in the middle of working right now, Get it uploaded. I want to see. Or even if you're not working on the challenge and you're working on something else design-wise in Photoshop, post it in there. Share with us. We'll take a look at it. Yeah. Sounds fun. 
Paul really likes the karate illustration that you have. Thank you. The concept. Break that norm. Erica says, thank you for drawing all kinds of folks. It makes her happy. Yeah. Diversity is very, very important. I, I love draw all types of people because it shows a wide, wide, wide range of your skill mm -hmm. to client, and client will be like, oh, we want this, and you have the ability to do it. Yeah, so it's not just for the diversity, but also saying, like, I can draw everybody. Yes, it's also for your own benefit mm -hmm. to show your skills, your, your skill set. Yeah, and also shows, like, I care about this. Like, yeah. This is in your portfolio, and it's important for you to include in the future, and right. people who are also care about that will want to work with you. And since editorial has so many, sometimes we'll tackle really like controversial topics. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have those skills to create a mood and different characters for it. Right. Yeah, it's, it's really interesting because your style is pretty friendly, like nice to look at, right. but you, you do tackle some hard stuff. So there's a lot of emotion that goes into this. It feels very like human. I used to do a lot of really, um, in your face illustration, but a lot of like one of my mentors talking about like people love those, but different certain group of audience or the client will think this is way too much. You mm -hmm. know, like this is the way how you being as artist to design to make people like I'm tackling this really serious topic, but also I can make it cute or nice mm -hmm. or interesting to look at mm -hmm. instead of feeling so angry. Yeah, right, right, right. So it's your ability to design. Right, it's like the illustration. It if it is in your face, it's almost too loud to right. actually hear what the message is. How do you do it? How do you make a different mm -hmm. detour to yeah. make it interesting? Definitely. And make it more friendly? Yeah. Stone is wondering, can you recommend a holder for your iPad? So like the one you're using now, and then you have one that you like as well. This one, the brand is called... Elevation Lab. Elevation Lab, I love it. Mm -hmm. And the other one I'm using is this one, this gray one. Yeah. And it has a little pencil holder right here. Mm -hmm. So you can charge and never lose it, put it in your bag. Yeah. So I really love this case. With that pencil. Yeah. And you can also fold it as a stand right here when you draw. Boom. Yeah. Very cool. So it sits in that nice little tray. And then right. the elevation one, it has a little tray on the bottom, but it also has this kind of like soft matte material that keeps your iPad not slipping around. Yeah. And this one has a three different heights. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's pretty heavy. It's like definitely made of metal. <laughs> I like it, so you don't like actually slide around. Mm -hmm. uh, Erica says, yeah, the illustration calls you in when it's approachable. Right. Yeah, it's like when you call people into a tough situation and into a tough conversation instead of just yelling at them. Right. <laughs> this is how we call visual communication. Yeah, exactly. All right, Tima said that uh, he'll make a submission since no one else has submitted yet. Thank you, Tima. Oh, thank you, Tima. Excited to see what you make. Imitating just posted something and it looks amazing. We have our first submission. Not gonna look at it yet. No. We got five minutes. It's pretty sick though. Uh, Jimmy says, I don't know why, but I can never draw on an incline. I need my iPad to be flat. Yeah, it depends on everyone, right? Mm -hmm. You use different gesture when you draw. Yep. Feel Definitely. it, feel it. Right, and it, it also depends like where you need your hand to rest. So if it's on an incline, sometimes your hand has to like be in the air the whole time and that can be really tiring. <laughs> uh, so if you have it flat, your hand just rests really nicely. I didn't plan to do this beer, but I think it, it frames uh, the face better. Yeah, that's a little more depth. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> we okay. have another submission too from Tima. Very good. I really love drawing like at an easel where like my hands and my elbows are totally free. You just kind of. Same here. But then once you get into the details, I like to kind of sit down and get close. I get really quiet when I do details. I, I can't talk. Yeah, <laughs> right. Don't worry, I'll talk. <laughs> it's my job. Paul says, I saw the coolest thing in fresco. You can split a photo with a lasso and then use a clear water to seam it together. What? Ooh. Really? Dude, that is cool. I didn't know you could I um, know that. like affect a photo layer. 
That's interesting. Paul, I'm gonna have to try that. Love it. The seams, yeah. Who did you see do that, Paul? I'm very interested. All right, now you're adding the little mitten fingers. Mm-hmm. Definition for the bag. <laughs> Gotta keep redoing it till it's perfect. We got just a couple more minutes until we're gonna do design feedback. We got two submissions. Oh, Thank you everyone for showing up and submitting. <laughs> My imitation of easel drawing looks like driving a low rider. <laughs> <laughs> Low rider is also drawing. <laughs> That's so good. Oh, Paul, you saw the seam effect on Skillshare. Nice. I need to check that out. I know there are some new Fresco Skillshare classes. And another trick to, uh, to show dimension is adding the seam of the clothes. So, you oh. know, like this is very flat, right? Once you add a seam, you know how the body is mm. turned. Yeah. And this one is right here underneath the thigh. Uh, Linda wants to know, how did you color your original color study? So that little tiny version. So I normally um, pick a limited five to six limited palettes. And because this one is environmental, so I want to be green. A brighter color looks fresh, looks young. So what kind of mood do you want to create? Well, if this relationship uh, illustration is kind of sad and depressed, depressing, you use a like, more like, blue, purple, and darker and, and cooler colors. Mm -hmm. And it really matters like how you feel this, uh, you want to communicate. That's it, and this one is fresh. So I want to use most like green. So I do a lot of green in the background, it sprouts. Then I use a warmer tone to actually pull the focal point to the, the figure. So the middle one, I always want to do like kind of like orangey one. So people mm. really get that focal point right there to the figure and the face. Nice. Yeah. Very cool. And I'm guessing you use like a little version of your sketch and you just shrink it down. Yes. Color on top. And always play with a color rough. Whatever you want to do adjustment, this is the place to make mistake mm -hmm. because it's easy to adjust. Yeah. So just play with it. And then here you just get to draw, paint, do your thing. Right. Nice. D says, fascinating. Very fascinating. Yeah, Erica, the uh, fresco classes are awesome. Erica likes the Lisk Fang one. So Lisk made a really, really awesome Adobe Fresco Skillshare course. If you want to check it out, you can just literally search Adobe Fresco Skillshare. It's the first thing that pops up. I love her work. Her work is amazing. She has even a chapter called How to Use Limited Color. That is the eighth one. Very nice. She has all kinds of tools, brushes putting it all together, adding texture, go check it out. And then someone else said, uh, okay, it's Rich Armstrong's water stitching course on Skillshare. Water stitching course. Check it out. It is almost time to do feedback. Mm -hmm. We've got three submissions. Thank you, Leah, for posting yours right at the buzzer. Thank you. So cool, we wanted three, we got three. Amazing, we're gonna start looking at these. And then we'll have a couple more minutes to finish up the illustration okay. afterwards. So we are gonna do design feedback for today's daily creative challenge, which was to make a Halloween portrait using a couple different Photoshop techniques. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And that was hosted by Jesus. He's here. If you need to send him a message or anything, you can do so in Discord. This is the first one by imitating. This is when your parents are a witch and also a vampire. <laughs> This poor baby has a big scar on its face. Aww. This is really good it's really color good. Uh, editing. And I like how they use a filter, the, the fuzziness around, mm -hmm. and they're very clear center to make the baby face really coming out. Yeah, definitely. We've got these little tiny fangs. Look at that fang with blood. Cute, ooh, a hairy mole. <laughs> oh, poor baby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got these red eyes. This is really believable with like the highlight on this scar. Wow. Isn't it a water effect, right? Isn't it? I'm not sure. Okay. Tell us if. Yeah, I wasn't know. wasn't closely watching what Jesus was teaching, but right. I saw him painting this on like almost with a brush. I wonder if it has to do with the blend modes right. or channels or something. We got these shiny little things. I'm honestly very impressed by how you made this like 
fuzzy selection uh, green. I feel like that'd be really hard to select. It's not a, it's not a hard edge. It's a nice job. Very nice job. And it's holding a little wand, it seems. So good. I don't okay. have any critique for this. It's great. Mm -hmm. Except maybe the these fangs feel maybe a little too harsh for how like soft the rest of the image is. They maybe they'd be like toned back a little bit. Or you can do like a maybe like a blood like dropping out of the fang, mm -hmm. so you break the shape a little. Yeah. Yeah. So it doesn't it doesn't look like the blood is actually contouring the fang. I see. Right. Yeah. 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 Nice. Super cute. Super creepy. Very Halloweeny. Very good. Love it. Okay, this is by Tima. We got Wink Wink. Yes. Dude, Tima, did you just like put this together in a couple minutes? Amazing. So good. Increase the scale a little bit so we've got an eyeball opening and closing. Ooh. That's great. Makes me feel weird. Right in my alley. <laughs> Jimmy says for that baby one, turns out it's not Photoshop. That is just how the baby looks. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. I think, Tima, you do a really good job of meshing like the graininess and darkness of this image with your edits. So this feels very integrated because it's still very dark right. and shadowed. The like highlight you have on the skin here makes it look so realistic. I only have compliments. This is great. Yeah, I don't want to look at it anymore. <laughs> like, that's a good thing. <laughs> Definitely a good thing. Is this your new profile picture, Tima? <laughs> so scary. All right, this is by Leah, day four, work in progress. Hopefully not, definitely not done, but here is a start. Nice. So here's the original, and this is the edit. Ooh, it's spooky, look at this cool. tooth. Cool. So long, a bit long in the tooth there. Nice, so we've done a little bit of like uh, color painting. Changed I think he just, color. he just bit somebody, that's why I wanted to faint. Oh gosh, Fell broke off. off. Right. I think one thing I'll say is maybe tone down the saturation of the shirt because mm. the blue, the very vibrant blue is competing with the face. Yeah. Just tone it, maybe like just lower the um, saturation a little. Right. That will make the face really popped. I agree. And yeah. this blue is a certain hue that it's almost vibrating right. a little bit. So it's very bright and maybe that's what you meant to do, yeah. but something to think about. Nice job, Leah. Can't wait to see mm. your final. Nice. All right, Tim. Is this? Is that Love Michael Shiz? It. That's amazing. Made a very spooky photo, even composited in a graveyard image. Very cool. Tim, how did you make this glow kind of streak come yeah. out? Tim is definitely a Photoshop master, so I'm always interested to hear how he does stuff. I think he also did a nice job of adding this green highlight, like light bouncing off yeah. other parts of the face. Makes that dimension go away. Mm -hmm. nice. I think you could probably integrate this green in other places as well. Like maybe top of the lip, a little Ooh, bit more on the nose. nose. Yes. Very good. Zombie baby. Zombie. So awesome. Okay, let's look ah. at some more. We have more. There we go. Still have to work on the blend between foreground and background mm. and the arms highlight. All right, if you don't want to see blood or gross stuff, here's a warning. You might want to look away. Walk away. Ooh. Ooh. So this, I think this is pr probably from The Walking Dead. Yeah. It looks like The Walking Dead color grading. Nice. So it looks like we have some sort Very of figure nice. composited into this. Yeah. Some blood added. Ugh. Blur, maybe like blur the edges of the hair a little more, so make it like everything very mm. go together. Yeah. The edges is very hard yeah. at, this, at this moment. Right. I, could, I think it could be feathered a little bit more, but right. it, it does look terrible. And definitely no, it's great. the colors mesh together pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think about the way the blood stains look? I think they look a little bit light over yeah, here. Yeah, it could be a more in the same tone. Yeah, I think over here where they get really dark, that mesh that matches better with how blood looks in the rest of the image. Right, because it's the cloth, dark. when the cloth absorb any liquid, it actually turns a darker color. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So make it just a little darker, okay. but looks really cool. And I love how you have this kind of composite yeah. reaching towards you and breaking the frame. And very scary for sure. Yeah, okay. Now we're off the screen, everybody. <laughs> we can look back. All right, this is by oh, Anothai, oh. my Halloween pick. Cool. Nice. How cute. 
So we've got these kind of spooky buildings composited into the background, a moon, a very ghoulish, uh, I almost said scorpion, no, skeleton. <laughs> skeleton, skeleton. It reminds me of a Chinese zombie. I don't know why. A Chinese zombie? Yeah, this uh, Chinese zombie is like, they always have like, dark eyes. Oh, gotcha. But this is skeleton, I think it's a skeleton, yeah. Yeah. Nice. I think this is Very good. really realistic how you've gotten this value around the eyes. Like it really looks like it's on the skin. Right. wonder what blend mode you used. Let us know. And the texture on the skin. Yeah. Nicely done. Very good. Cool, cool. cool. All right. That's all we're going to do for now. Thank you everyone for submitting. Really appreciate it. And keep posting your work in the current challenge. You can get feedback from the rest of the community before you post your final on Behance. Yes. That's the way to get critique and make your work better. Mm. All right, we have about 20 minutes. All right. So let's finish this bad boy up, get those details going. Halloween just the, f the most fun yeah. holiday. Yeah, I agree. We were talking about that before the stream. Yeah. It's just the best day. Best day. It's a bunch of adults being silly, dressing up. <laughs> okay, my... Sorry, my finger's a little sweaty, so it's not working. You got kind of scared looking at all the, the yeah. zombies. <laughs> oh, Zoro says my day is done, taking the afternoon off. Happy Halloween. Goodbye, Zoro. Bye. Hope the ravens don't get you, the ones that fly into your town and then fly away. Scary. Stone says, I don't like fast zombies. I like them to go very slow. Me too. If there were zombies, that's Same how here. I would prefer my zombies. Slow. Leah says this reminds, the one we looked at before, it reminds her of the Kingdom Zombies. Is Kingdom Zombies. Is that a K-drama? I don't know. Zombies. Let me look. Yeah. I knew it. It's on Netflix, I'm pretty sure. Is oh, is that the one um, in the, it's a period show? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, do you recommend it, Leah? I've always seen it and I've always been tempted, but I've never clicked on it. Also, Leah, are you a K-drama fan? Cause me too. Mm. <laughs> I just started a new one yesterday. Nice, I love the highlight and how simple you've made this water bottle. I'm debating, should I add water in it? Maybe Ooh. I should, but let's finish the recipe. Mm -hmm. Cool. Luckily, you have a nice blue that you can use. Yeah. Voodoo Val also loves the Kingdom K-drama. New favorite zombie content. <laughs> I don't have any favorite zombie content. Do not like zombies. I think the Korean train to Busan. Mm -hmm. That one's really good. Ooh. Ooh. No thanks. <laughs> Shivangi says Jojo's Bizarre Adventure. Is that a scary one, jo or Shivangi? I thought that was kind of just like a weird, a weird one. Does it have zombies in it? Never heard of it. Oh, it's, it's kind of popping off right now with all the memes, all the kids on the internet. They love Jojo. Nice. She's got all of her cutlery needs taken care of. Voodoo says, Train to Busan was awesome. They made an anime movie as well. Nice. Uh, Tima wants to know, is K-drama cool? I've never watched any, but I do love Kim's Convenience, but that's a comedy. I like K-dramas, Tima. I like it. <laughs> They're pretty sappy. Like they usually have some sort of romantic element and it's like painful, but also amazing. But there's also some that are just dramas, like police dramas or courtroom dramas. And they're highly addictive. Oh my gosh. And they're always like an hour and a half long. <laughs> right. They're so long. <laughs> you just watch them all at one time. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love at the end of the episodes, they have like the really long drawn out scene of like two characters like staring at each other and then it like freeze frames and it just shows that for like five minutes. It's, to be continued. Yes, it's so dramatic. It shows people looking at each other from like 10 different angles. It's That's like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I love it. Oh, Shivangi says Jojo does have zombies in it. Okay, Ooh. good to know. I don't want to give it a watch. 
good to know. Is your pupper going to dress up for Halloween? We actually bought a um, the cat bus from Totoro oh, from Taiwan. It's cute. So I think I'm going to dress him up like a cat bus. I love that. Do you think he would wear it? Oh, he love it. Aww. He loves it. He loves that costume. Great. I'm trying to find a picture of my doggo in his costume. Let's see if I can find it. Got it. All right. Here's Kashi, very excited about his witch's hat. <laughs> I think he looks like the surprised Pikachu meme. In this. He's just like, oh. <laughs> I think he actually hates this hat, so I'm glad he looks happy in this. Christina says, can I use my own photo for the challenge? Of course. It's highly recommended that you use your own photos. Oh, I like her bangs. Very... Short. Make it, make it stylish. Yes, Jack, that is my doggo and he is the best. No one can tell me otherwise. Mm -hmm. All doggos are the best though. All doggos are the best. Such a good boy. Uh, Jason wants to know, do we think that zombies should be fast, like in 28 Days Later, or slow, like Dawn of the Dead? Definitely slow. Definitely slow. <laughs> oh my gosh. 28 Days Later is a good movie. It is a good movie. I like that one. Yeah, Tima, that's Kakashi, my pup. He's a good boy. Puppies are the best. I agree, Robert. We need more puppies during this spooky stream. Stone says, Z Nation has fast zombies. I can't watch it. Ugh. Ooh. Z Nation. Mm-hmm. Uh, Shivangi is wondering about fresco for windows. So we're definitely working on uh, porting fresco to Windows mobile devices like tablets. But I don't think that fresco will ever be a desktop app because you might as well just use Photoshop or Illustrator if you want to use your desktop. Right. Ooh, Ken says that uh, he's reading a series where the zombies are slow during the day and fast at night. Interesting. Scary. That's when you don't want them to be fast, is at night. <laughs> Tima, yes, Kakashi is named after Kakashi Sensei from Naruto. Mm -hmm. uh, one, because Kakashi Sensei has like a dog ninja pack, but also because Kakashi means scarecrow. And when we first got our pup, he looked like a scarecrow. His fur was all strawy and skinny. Oh. Now he Now he's a little more plush. He's pretty luxurious right now. Ooh, using the color picker. This is new. So I'm just picking out white. It's easier to strike all the way top. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tima wants to know, what if a vampire bites a zombie? What if a zombie becomes a vampire or the vampire becomes a zombie? It's a good question. It's a question for the ages. I think we're going to take like three hours for that debate. <laughs> hmm. I think, I don't think the vampire would become a zombie because vampire is already undead. Mm. I don't think it would affect them. But I do think the zombie might. Well, zombies are kind of vampires too. Like they bite people and like get sustenance from them. So maybe they're the same thing. Maybe they're like cousins. Isn't zombies always are from a virus? But what, mm. what makes a vampire vampire? <gasps> is it gene or? Maybe it's a virus too. Right. Infected blood. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Uh, Steve's talking about a funny slow zombie show in the UK. It's called Zomboat. Zomboat. So two sisters escape zombies on a super slow canal boat, and zombies just walk at the same speed as the boat, but they can't swim. That sounds great. <laughs> That's awesome. It sounds so like a lackadaisical. Oh, Leah doesn't think that a zombie would ever bite a vampire because a zombie wouldn't see a vampire as like a, a snack. Oh, good point. They'd be like, I'm not biting you. You're already dead and gross. And a zombie vampire combo would be a vampy or a zompire. <laughs> this is where the um, smoothing 
on the brush stroke really comes in handy. Right, for that perfect straight line. Mm -hmm. And you have it kind of angled at a really interesting angle. So I can that works just hold it really quick. Mm -hmm. Nobody look too close. This is hard to do live. So much pressure on him. No, <laughs> don't judge me. No, no one cares. Oh my gosh, we have a visitor behind us. Who's that? Get back, get back. Oh, he's gone. I banished him. A librarian defeated. Yes, I'm not only a librarian. I'm a fighter. I'm also a zombie killer. <laughs> <laughs> That's My character is very complex. <laughs> Somebody needs to write some fan fiction about this character. <laughs> Oh, werewolf vampires? Werepires? We haven't talked about were werewolves nearly enough. I think they always go for gun. People always talk about zombies. Mm hmm Right? Oh, Leah thinks that becoming a zombie is because of a parasite. It'd be parasitic in nature. Mm. Okay, like zombie ants, yeah. <laughs> Awesome. And I know we've talked a lot about spooky stuff and haven't been very serious this stream, but we only have about 10 minutes left with Alec. So if you have any questions for a successful and awesome freelance illustrator, humble, humble, humble. Mm -hmm, uh, ask him because he's here and he's legally obligated to answer them. Legally obligated. Legally. <laughs> Not really, but I think he'll answer just because he's a nice guy. Any technique wise or? Mm -hmm. Clientele. We talked a little bit about this yesterday, yeah. but um, did you always know that you wanted to be specifically a freelancer? Yes. Oh. The answer is yes. Okay, you always wanted to work for yourself. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Because I think company already have the onset of their branding. Mm -hmm. um, it couldn't be changed. So if illustrator, um, for me, for, for my personally, I like to work something like what I like to do, like my own style. Mm -hmm. I got kind of burned out if I keep doing like the things that people give me like a design assets mm -hmm. to use from. Yeah. So I like to do my own things. Yeah, and they're paying you to do what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So it really depends cool. on people. Yeah. yeah. Some people like to um, get a full-time job and design stuff. It's great. Mm -hmm. It really depends on what kind of creative industry you're in, right. what kind of type you're doing. Right, and we talked a little bit about why you were drawn to editorial mm -hmm. um, and how you almost went into poli-sci, yeah. but also like drawing, so this is kind of like the perfect combo for you. I think uh, what I do is very like education-based and instructional-based, yeah. so I've always loved teaching, but I also like drawing, so just combine those two things. Yeah teach people how to use creative tools. It's all about know yourself. What, mm -hmm. do you like, what do you like to do that's the most important things? Yeah, and that's how you become like your perfect self and like that's what makes you uh, viable for clients. Right. Like what makes you you? What's special? Leah wants to know, what is your favorite way to get new clients? My favorite way is through, actually, to be honest, through my agent because I don't have to talk to anyone. Mm -hmm. You're just like, oh, new work, great. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> but other than that, I will, personally, I would like to meet people. And when you got an email, it's like, hey, I know this job opportunity through the person you met and mm -hmm. they recommend me. You just feel so great about yourself. It's like, oh, my, actually, my networking skill pay off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So meet people is very important as a freelance as well. Yeah, real connections. And knowing that like people know you as a person right. and that's why they want to work with you because you're you're a good person. Good to work with. I think it is so awesome like when you just make friends with someone just because you honestly like them and then you also get work from it. It's great. Okay, we're almost done here. The last few lines. You kind of oh, wow. timed this illustration perfectly. It's pretty amazing. I tried. <laughs> You're like, I practiced many I practiced. times. It is your job. Uh, Tima says, wereworms and zombie snakes. Vampire Bigfoot. <laughs> Whoa, what's <laughs> going on? <laughs> what is this new world that this you're spinning? This takes a turn. <laughs> That's awesome. I wish there were more new scary creatures. Right? We've always had vampires. We've always had zombies. What's new? 
What's hot? What's 2019? Marvel Zombie Universe. Oh, whoa. They actually the have Undead? That. Right. They have that? They have that in comic. Oh, like Bizarro World, like mm -hmm. alternate universe. Right. Interesting. Are you a comic? Fan? Not really. Okay, yeah. you just know. I just I just like like to go on toy shop and they have like comic session. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I bet you get inspiration from when you go to the toy shop and look around at all the figurines and stuff. I love figurines. Okay, we're done. Woohoo! Wow. I'm gonna turn out this uh, sketch layers. No, that's fine. <laughs> yes. And there we go. Ta da! Let's get a zoom in on that, like a good look at stuff. Wow, so all of this work was possible because you did so much planning in yeah. the beginning. So I think the only thing I would go back is I maybe add more like uh, lines for hairs. Oh, okay. To get more rhythm. Yeah. And maybe sometimes if I think this 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 shape is too bland or just like a blob. Yeah, it's a lot of one shape. You know, you can add cat shadow to, to make the eyes move around, mm -hmm. just to make that dimension a little more. Maybe under the armpit. Wow. Under the armpit right here, you know. Perfect. See, so makes the arm just pops a little mm -hmm. more. Very nice. I love how your figures, they look similar. Like they have similar shaped faces, but you managed to make these tiny little nuanced differences to make them look like their own people. You're getting a lot of compliments in the chat. Tima says, very nice. Thank Leah says, you. wow, that is sweet. Stone says, beautiful. Wow, nice. Thank you. <laughs> Steve says, awesome job, four exclamation points. Amazing. But also, like, um, practice different body shape, mm -hmm. you know, because this is such a fun personal project. I just want to do an image, like, I like to look at, but it's great for a different body shape to practice because the rhythm will be different, mm -hmm. um, the look will be different, the feel of the whole image, yeah. the energy will be different as well. Yeah. yeah, it's really good to play with that and just shape dynamics, different yeah. shapes. Uh, Robert wants to know, are brushes and fresco compatible with Photoshop brushes? Yes. yes, you can bring your Photoshop brushes or your Kyle T. Webster Mega Pack into fresco. Okay, so we have about two more minutes. Um, really quick, I'm going to open up your portfolio there you go. so people can follow you. That's not what we want. Follow, follow, follow. Thank you, guys. NKLU. NKLU. Okay. Yes, exactly. <laughs> All right. If you want to check out more of Alec's work, please go here, nkalecLou.com. You can also follow him on Instagram. Contact okay. him. Let's go to Instagram. Show you some more work. Boom, send them a message. Say hi, ask some questions. Yeah. Very cool. So after us, we have the XD Daily Creative Challenge coming up at 1130, hosted by Peter Del Tondo himself. So if you want to learn about uh, screen design and assets and all that good stuff, stick around. And then we're going to follow that up at noon with the XD case study with Mandy Hahn. So more XD goodness then I think we might be streaming a little tomorrow, but we'll be at max next week. So make sure you come back for that. Yeah. Thank you, Alec, for being here. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Yay, Love hopefully it. you'll come back someday. I hopefully will. Hopefully we haven't scared back. you away. Yeah, yeah. All right, everyone, stick around for Peter's stream. We'll be back in about five minutes. Bye. Bye.